Hey guys, welcome to this replay cast here of the Bootcamp Elite Tourney or whatever. There's a new one going on that I'm not participating in, but I was told to cast uh, these two games of Milan versus the Grape Jellyman uh, by Lord Pipe. I have no idea what's going on, but I heard from some few people that uh, they should be some spicy games, so really have no idea what to expect here. But uh, I think we're just going to fast forward the deployment. It looks like we have uh, Jelly playing as USSR. And Milan, of course, he's playing... This is some weird blue deck. Could be armored. Definitely not mech. Because there's a lot of wheeled units. Or it could be that weird uh, blue 85 that people play that I don't understand at all. But... Okay, we have game start here. So uh, Cheetah D right off the bat for Greyhound. Gonna spot a lot of these helicopters moving for Bravo. Starting with a K29 in the CV, that's pretty bold. Also another one in the back. PU opener, that is also pretty impressive. That is crazy actually. I didn't see all of these MI8s at the start. Um, where's Milan CV? What is going on in this game? It's only it's only like a minute in. Alright, so Milan forgot to buy a base CV. And Jelly is practically deck chainy, so that is already interesting. Um Yeah. Sending a recon infantry down the flank for some cheese later on in the game. Uh, and he sent the CV to Foxtra. This is so odd <laughs> that he just <laughs> left his home sector on cap. I don't get it. Okay. There's a lot of helicopters out in the field. We have an OBR coming in now. Uh, can Milan deal with this? Calling in a double stack of 2A1s. Uh, it should be able to deal with that more or less. Cannon engaging the Gornostrelki there. Still uh, setting up position, but it looks like Milan is mainly uh, focusing on golf, it looks like. Because the bulk of his forces are over there, not much in the middle. And uh, sending units to the bottom now. Yeah, and I have no idea what uh, what Jelly is doing. I must have missed what those uh, MI8s died to. I believe that one died to the Rattel and the mo 13 and yeah, there's no AA here, so kind of curious what shot all of those MI8s, but yeah, it looks like the, the main fight here is in golf now. Got the mech inf engaging the Gornos, the BTR-90 for support. It's going to pin down these riflemen, but with the rattle support, it's going to be um, more or less effective for, for me when there to clean up. Not much going down at the bottom still. The BTR-90 does go down in golf. Uh, is this, he still doesn't. <laughs> how do you, how do you not notice that? <laughs> He's bought a CV now. Finally, my God. This private purgatory. What's going on here? Okay. Yeah. Looks like uh, Milan is setting up for an echo push, trying to take this position here away from the Gornostrelki. It's a good uh, town to have, especially if you can fortify it. Um, it's a solid, solid spot. But yeah, game's kind of stabilized now. We do have a book on the field, which is kind of pointless because there's no air spawn. But uh, there will be soon. But that's a nice point lead for for Jelly. It's just a free tick and no um, no planes on the field for a little while. We do have the Hillos coming back in here. They might do some cleanup if they get nice line of sight. This uh, mechanism is most definitely going to get shot, yep. Instantly dies to the MTV. Not much going on in Delta, and there's a push happening in Echo now. So, for the time being, it's a standard game. Not not a lot of crazy stuff happening, but I would say uh, Jelly's in a pretty good spot overall, considering he's got golf more or less under his control. Although this two mat might get the Osa, oh, very lucky, narrowly like uh, missed the line of sight block there. 
Yeah, very lucky pick off there with the two mat. Mechanf will close the gap and take out this Gorno no problem, and the two A1s in position as well. It's only a Factoria here in this town, so it won't be presenting too much of a threat to those Leopards. And we have the False Kimiagere unloading. It's a bit premature. Maybe he could have unloaded them somewhere here, or even here. Um, just extra time they have to walk. Yeah, Gorno is going to take out this AMX for sure. Come on. Looks like they missed once. Okay, that's a lucky AMX. It will make it out alive, it looks like. We do have some Rattles coming in for support, but there, there's a lot of helicopters here for for uh, Jelly. Starting with the FOB too, so that's always nice when you're going to helo spam. But yeah, so we have a Golf in control of Jelly and uh, Echo more or less in the control of Milan. Sending these Leos unsupported is very bold. No AA, no recon. Could easily die. But, okay. Well, he's got two of these here. This guy's smoking crack. What's happening? These are the best players? Okay. Uh, yeah, BRDM3 is on the flank. Jelly knows what's up. He knows who he's playing against. So, setting up that base defense. Um, but it doesn't seem like this false Kamegara is going to the spawn. It's probably going towards Charlie instead. Which is also a good idea if you can get in the back line, especially if you can sneak something in this town. Like a recon in for a SAS even in here is very nice. If you, let's say, play blue moto, you can use that uh, flank as a cutoff to Charlie. It works out sometimes. Yeah, we have a T-80s rushing down the middle. Taking out the mech inf. Also a, a bold attack here. Because they're also unsupported. So both players really aggro with their tanks. Going um, pretty deep to engage. Love a chop route. This must be blue. No it's not. Could be blue armored but then there's no tanks. I don't think it's armored. It yeah it is armored. These are elites. It's blue armored. It's an interesting uh, deck. But I don't know, I prefer red armor to it. A lot more options. We got the Tefa gonna hopefully take out this. Nope, never mind. <laughs> he got melted. There's another Tefa as well. The MLD should, yep, yeah, help the MI. Oh, wait, he uh, he fired position on it because it was hovering. That's why he's using the splash damage. But Milan in a pretty bad spot, I have to say. This does not look good for him. And I have no idea who won the first game, by the way, so. That should be extra interesting. Although considering that this goes to game three, uh, I assume the other player wins the second match. Okay, yeah, Jelly in a, in a really, really good spot here. He buys a CV, uh, as he should, solidify his lead. Uh, sending this T-80 down the, the highway. Please don't tell me it's going to kill the hotel CV. That would be actually hilarious. False Kimiagare moving into Charlie, it looks like. Especially if the CV goes there, he might have some opportunities to kill it. T-80 engaging the Rifleman. They do have the Law, I mean... Oh, and the Rattle can... <laughs> he could side shot it. I don't think they're in, in range. Yeah, the, the Rifleman scare off the T-80, but this other one is still going strong. Still moving towards Hotel. Yeah, not much happening here, though. But it's up to Milan to to make a breakthrough on this um, on this position now. He's definitely behind in the game. Hey, this T80 is still going. Oh my god! It's gonna get the CV, isn't it? And these MLDs are just flying so deep in the airspace. There's no AA on the ground. There's just one Chaparral over here, and that's it. We got another double stack, or is this different? I guess he drove them back, and I'm moving them here because they're low on fuel, so it's the same ones. Okay, he buys uh, two block 52s because that's totally needed to kill an MLD. The PU is still alive though, but it, uh, it might be risky to go that deep against both of those. 
uh, Gazelle does spot the T80, and Milan's not buying anything in response, and yep. TV goes down, and Milan loses control of the spawn once again. Nice, nice. That's beautiful. Yeah, I think this is looking amazing for Zoe. This is a really good spot. He's even pressuring the spawn here. He mopped up the rifleman, and now he's got this T80 uh, trying to contest Foxtrot. Yeah, but the two A1s are, are back in support now. It's got a PD, a PU, and MLD. That's three cards of ASF. A bit overkill. Yeah, this is a really good position for but it has his uh, flank exposed here. Not a lot of units for Jolly. So this uh, false Kimiga could do some damage, but there are some scratches, so it uh, should be fine. Because Jelly's aware of, of, of how Milan plays this game, so that's good for him. And this T80 is still alive here. Uh, the one in Foxshot did get wiped out, though. And we have another CV <laughs> bought for for Hotel. <laughs> that's excellent. My God. This is a tournament cast, by the way. This is that's insane. Su twenty five T on the ground. Kind of feel like that's not really necessary, but I guess when you're floating so many points, you might as well get it. But I guess some Leo ones. It's kind of an overkill investment, I think. But with the air spawn down, I mean, it might be good. It's it's worthwhile to have it. I think. He just needs something to spot for it now. I could uh, mop up these Leos really easily because there's only a Chaparral for A. There is nothing else on the field that could deal with it. Yep, T80 meets the 2A1. Most definitely going to go down here. Oh, kills the supply truck. It's still worth it. T80 goes down, yep. Then the 25T will not have line of sight anymore. The CV will reach hotel anytime soon now, and the the blocks might actually take out the the 25T if Jelly's not careful. Chance to lose it. Got more helicopters here on the way, but there is a, a chaparral. But it's only 50%. You guys have to keep in mind like how unreliable the chaparral can actually be. Although in this case that is two out of two, and he does also have the the pivots, so that is okay. Wow, three, three out of three. A good chap. Yeah, still has control of Echo though. It's not bad, but this position is truly awful. Yeah, and the blocks uh, come out here. Rear armor on the 25T goes down. Yep. And now the PU, I mean, they expended all their missiles, so you can actually take out both of them here. That's beautiful, yeah. Unless the cheetah, oh yeah, okay. Kills the cheetah too. Would have been hilarious if the cheetah got the PU. Yeah, Milan throwing away all his Air Force in a split second. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, Milan comes back from this. This looks incredibly bad for Milan here. And uh, yeah, Jelly just uh, doubles down on buying CVs, which in this position makes sense, especially after killing both of those ASFs. So losing the 25T is no big deal at this point, I would say. Because um, he, he has a massive territorial advantage it's got vdv down the highway as well it's going to limit the mobility a lot of these leopards and uh i assume he can always buy much heavier tanks if if the need arises yeah another P the pd's out on the field again just patrolling with it this obr hasn't moved by the way it's been here since uh, it's been bought which is like 15 minutes ago yeah, I'm I'm waiting to see what this guy does. Right, truly he kills the CV. I mean, this game was hyped up. People told me to cast this shit, so uh, something good better happen. Okay, yeah, we got we got more MTVs being brought out by Jelly here. Yeah, hasn't moved much. Ooh, this is a sneaky VDV. If he's moving down this ridge, he could even reach the BV there. We also have some uh, mech inf here. 
for Milan, but they're running straight into MTVs. One goes down. Yeah, that's. Oh, it's just bulk up. It's uh, base bulk up. By say another PVATS, which is a 40 point unit that needs to deal with a 35 point unit. Oh, but the Chaparral intercepts it once again. Look at this Milan tier accuracy, man. Never happens when I use the Chaparral. He shot five missiles and hit all of them and the CV goes <laughs> CV goes down again. My god. He's a plus three. Oh no, Milan, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my god. Okay, the cheetah gets uh, intercepted by the PD. Goes down. That's all of his air force thrown out. And now he buys a double stack of rolling twos. Which he doesn't really need because the 25T is dead. Oh man, this VDV. That's so clutch. All right, but surely Milan brings this back, right? He has to. We have another OBR for Jelly. Most likely bought as a response to the two A1s. It's not a bad call. Could um, zone them off, especially with the amount of VDVs he has and the um, positional advantage he has. He could set up these Factorias on the hillside here and just create a kill zone for the tanks on this um, playing field here. So Jelly's playing this really well. So relying a bit too much on the MTVs, but I guess as Soviets, that's what you do. This VDV is now in a perfect spot to kill that. Nice. L uh, unlucky that it wasn't in the in the town. Could have actually preserved a bit more hit points. But I think the false Kimegara should be able to close the gap because they are they're panicked now. They're gonna miss a lot. Oh, and these guys get caught. Oh, that's just sad. It's just sad. He could have had it. Could have absolutely closed the the gap from the other side. If you were positioned here, you could spot the CV. Probably not move across the open, but... Yeah. They are routed, though, which you don't see often. Yeah, I don't see Milan coming back in this game. He has moved the 2A1s down to golf now, so it looks like he's trying to at least get back control of this sector. Uh, K-29s will uh, waste the ammo on the tanks. They will panic them though. And uh, not having the auto loader, it's going to affect that a little bit. And now the PVADs is all oh, no. <laughs> weapons jammed. Of course. This is still alive, keep in mind. The PU is back up. Oh no, that's just unlucky. Could have dealt with both of the helos here. And it goes down to the K-29. There's uh, another uh, double stack of BTRs here, uh, BTR-90s with uh, Spetsnaz. Yeah, that will uh, clean that up anytime soon now. And yeah, not much to say, Milan buying another CV for Foxtrot. I just don't see him coming back in this. 2A1. Still moving forward, completely unsupported by the way. Just one squad of uh, mech and and a lot of helicopters for a jelly. Got any of a bit more PVADs than uh, than that, I think. Sending the chaparral there, but the chaparral will have to get close in order to intercept these, and uh, he's gonna become very vulnerable unless he stays here and they come closer. Uh, maybe that could work for him. Yeah, Milan just let uh, Jelly tick so much. Yeah, exactly like that. Should be able to... Oh, now he's missing. When he needs it the most. Oh, look at that. Three three misses in a row. Beautiful. Yeah, there we go. He finally hits one, and he has to reload. Because I think the chap fires four shots and then reloads, right? I have no idea. Yeah, not, not looking good at all here for Milan. Sending in the rolling twos now. But they're not so good against helicopters. Could easily get caught. It's only one range increment uh, more. And we have Tefas and a Gazelle Cannon for Milan here. And there's only Screzits for, for Jelly in defense. Although he does have the PU and the PD in the sky. 
but this yeah it just cannot engage helicopters so they are safe for the time being oh the 2a1s oh they're getting panic and stunned getting caught here Skrzyk goes down Tefa's closing the gap they're gonna mop up these GRUs he's just going all in here uh, with these Tefa's yeah but the Skrzyk and the PU yeah, they make short work of that Oh. PU, come on. Oh no, they have to reload forever now. That's the one uh, big disadvantage of the Roland. That it fires two shots and then basically reloads by next game. <laughs> Milan buying a CV, I guess, is just a hopeless attempt at trying to stop this tick. He is kind of regaining control of golf, but I'm not sure if it will be enough. He has managed to fend off the helicopters with the Roland, which is good. Um, he's kind of making a little incursion here down the highway with the Zeratel, so could work out for him. Uh, the OBRs have moved here to uh, deal with this attack, as they should, because Jelly is in a massive, massive lead. He just needs to play this defensively, and he's got the game. Yeah, but the, these shaken uh, leopards, I don't know if they'll be enough to, to deal with this. It's kind of, well, Jelly's smoked this off, which is pretty good, which allows his infantry to come close. Uh, zoning off the Leopards from providing fire support, and that's VDV, so that's really dangerous to the Leopards here. So if these VDV take out these Leopards, I do not see Milan coming back in this game at all. Yeah, they're going to find the CV at least, which is going to help Milan to at least stabilize. But yeah, there's a three, three stack of VDV going in here. They're absolutely gonna kill all of these tanks, aren't they? Using the smoke as cover, that's brilliant. One goes down, and the range on this is so big, and then there goes the other. Yeah, perfectly, perfectly played by Jelly there. Brilliant execution. Milan does have a CV going for, for golf though, so he's gonna flip it on plus one. But will it be enough? Because Jelly also has a CV going, I assume, for Delta. Which would be safer. Rearming his helicopters as well. Buying more Skrejets. That's good. Maybe he could have um, scrapped the CV in favor of more infantry to defend Charlie. Or perhaps uh, rally his OBRs and infantry to push Delta. Because he's already at 426, so... Yeah, buys another OBR. That's good. Buys more infantry. Yeah, you could play defensive too, but the front line is pretty weird because Jelly's kind of in this weird shape here, and then Milan's got a a reach around going here. Uh, Mechanic will surely die here. Yeah, so Jelly's now counter attacking into Golf. So this uh, CV that Milan bought is instead rallied to Delta. Yeah. Oh, never mind. He's got another one. Well, that won't last too long. But the Rattle here could intercept some of these units going. It depends. Uh, I think the Scratchets carry VDV typically. Oh, never mind. MTVs are so busted, honestly. They're way too good. It's a sneaky Rattle going down the spawn road. Could uh, get some lucky kills, maybe, potentially. But yeah, these OBRs are still inching up slowly and losing those two 2A1s uh, was a huge blow for Milan. Because if he at least kept them alive, rallied a bit more infantry, maybe he could have pushed into Charlie, but now there's a bit too much fire support. How did that, what? I guess the Razvetka must have spotted it. Okay, unlucky. TV goes down. Yeah, I think that's the final blow for Milan. There's no way he comes back in this, especially considering there's only five minutes left to go. Or rather, four minutes, whatever. Yeah, I guess that's game one. Still a, a weird game. I have no idea what Milan was smoking. But I'd sure like to try a bit of it. Because he, <laughs> he didn't have the air spawn for the first quarter of the game. And then the uh, T-80 just drove in. And then a VDV squad just picked off another CV. 
Yeah, a b bunch more mech in here dealing with this, but there's no way he comes back here. It this is way too over now. Uh, Rattle here stopped, unfortunately. I could have driven it up here. Maybe catch some reinforcements, but... Yeah, I think we can speed it up because... It looks pretty over, and now Jelly is just... Actually, some action is happening, so might as well slow it down. Yeah, we got the, the three OBRs now pushing in. Killing this recon. Two mats are nice, but they don't deal enough damage. It goes down easily. And yeah, Milan's not maintaining the, the foothold in golf for too long. I I have to say, uh, very well played by, by Jelly though. Textbook Soviet playstyle. And he didn't even spam artillery. That goes to show um, how well he played this game. He buys the 2A4 NL now, but it's a bit too late. He can't do much with it. Uh, Aksari spotted there by the Skrejets. Um But yeah, it, it, this is uh, this game is over. This game is over. I'm really not sure what Milan was doing. But in his defense, blue armor is very awkward to play. Because it's basically like a, a second rate blue mech. Yeah, I, I guess you're banking on the... South African units in it. Uh, I don't know if it's better than, than spamming Zeldas, you know? Like the M1 spam coupled with, with Zeldas is, is really potent, so. Okay, that'll be game one of this, uh, of this, I don't know, series, whatever you want to call it. People just told me to cast this, that's why I'm doing this. It's, it's like a, a one-off, I'm not gonna cover the tournament, but let me know what you thought of Milan's performance this game. And uh, we're also going to go ahead and look at game three. So that should also be fun. And uh, thank you guys for watching. See you next one. And welcome to the... Okay. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting that to be five minutes. I thought I would make two episodes out of this. But I guess it's just going to be one video. Okay, interesting. So Milan won game one that we didn't watch. Because I don't know. Uh, game two casted it before you, you saw it unless you're blind and now we have the third game on mech in a very mech place we have team one Milan playing some variant of Scandi and we have Jelly playing uh, not deploying any units so should be should be a, an interesting game maybe I should put an anti-spoiler on this yeah, I, I'll definitely do it. But I guess that spoils it now. Never mind. Whatever. Let's just watch this, I guess. Because what's the point otherwise? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a tank rush, isn't it? It's going to be a full-on tank rush. I'm just going to assume it is. Even starting with four Phoenix. That, that is so cheesy. Milan. Milan, you dirty dog. Look at this. Ultimate cheese player. Okay, so we have uh, DGC versus uh, Scandi. That's the matchup it looks like. Or some sort of specializations mixed in. It would probably be DGC mech, because that's what people usually play in a tournament. And would probably also be Scandi mech, because <laughs> that's also what people play in tournaments. Yeah, there's only tracked units, so I'm, I'm gonna say that these are both mechanized decks. So it's Battle of the Apes. The mech monkeys clash on the famed mechmanized map. This should truly be the Champions League of the title. Who's the more uh, brain dead mech player? I'm sorry, that's just too insulting. Uh, anyways, uh, looks like Jelly here has got his bulk of the forces moving to golf because that's the typical meta play on the map, so to say. Uh, there's just a big fight over this chunk of ground for 40 minutes. But some players, uh, they don't like to play by the norm. Like Milan here, he's got his forces and he's doing a Charlie push, which is really effective on this map. Because if you can storm right in this forest at the start and take out this choke point on the bridge, uh, you've basically secured half of the map. Because uh, your opponent can't reinforce down this road and uh, red players typically give up bravo so this is a free zone 
And uh, even if you lose golf, that doesn't matter because you can easily uh, lock this bridge off. And I mean, it, very rarely will someone push into Echo. You have to completely fall apart for that to happen. Uh, we only have a Milan 2 here, and that's actually kind of a decent defense for us, I would say. But I don't know if it'll be enough for what's coming his way. There's there's two automatics here. At least there was. What is he, what's he doing? I don't understand this game. There's no second CV either, which is typical. Some players like to start with it, but uh, recently it's it's less uh, common to do that. I'm curious to, to see who wins this, but given the fact that Milan's doing this, I think I'm I'm going to place my bets on Milan. I don't know. He's the one starting with this weird ass opener, so I would, I would assume he's the one that wins the game. Okay, we got. Uh, it looks it's a slow push here, so I guess his idea was to take Bravo. What's the what's the game plan here? This makes zero sense. Okay, took out a a truck. Yeah, with a leopard. Jelly finds that there's nothing in golf, so all of his forces here are just basically doing nothing but yeah this is a, a a good defensive line i think and then milan's kind of throwing his initiative by just sitting and waiting there's two fenix don't tell me this is how the game ends right so sweeping the forest with these that's good micro though like um how he's got them in a formation the automatic and the leopard are behind these cheap tanks, but they're most likely going to run out of fuel before they even get to here. Okay, we have the RBS engaging some transports. Jelly's doing this concave maneuver, trying to surround Milan. But Milan's Milan's playing a different game. Milan's got these Fenix going around. There's no way this ends like this, right? Buy a CV, please buy a CV. No, come on. Please. Oh my god, no way. This is how it ends. Okay, this YPR has a good chance of dealing with this. Nope, never mind. Escort, send the escort. It's even an infantry CV, it can defend itself. Smoke it, do something. What are you doing? Pushing up here in the meantime. Look at this amazing attack by Jelly. Oh, Jelly, no. This is a tournament game? You have to be kidding me. Oh my god. <sighs> Why did he even cast this? I don't know what to say, guys. I don't know. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Whatever this was. People told me to cast this, so I did. So, yeah. Uh... I'll see you in the next one.